Hey folks, all right, part two of the income elasticity. So again, we've looked at the responsiveness of consumers when your income changes and what happens, how fast elastic or how slow an elastic is, re is your response when your income changes. And so now we can focus on what happens if we are not given numbers in percent format, but rather raw numbers. So we know that it becomes E sub I, our equation. But since now we don't have numbers in percent format, we are gonna use the equation, the change in quantity over the change in income. Now this change in quantity is further explained with looking at the change based on the delta of what we call new minus old over the old quantity. So this delta Q is now represented in this equation format of Q2 minus Q1 over Q1. If this is true for the numerator, it must be true for the denominator as well, where now we're gonna have the change in income to be the new income, I2, minus I1, over the old income of I1. So to put this into perspective, let's use some examples where we no longer have numbers in percent format. Let's, so let's say income increases, yet again, from $100 per week to $300 per week, thus decrease consumption of whatever good from five to two goods. What is the income elasticity? So now we can see that we have two sets of numbers given. The first set gives us the income and the word from would tell us it's the old income and two must be the new income. At the same time, we can see that we have another set of numbers which represents the quantity of goods consumed from five to two. So now we can plug in what we have into our new equation. We have the quantity, new quantity two, which represents Q2 and five, which represents Q1. And if we plug in that equation, we're gonna have two, Q2, minus five, Q1, over Q1 of five. Now for income, same thing goes, here we have $100 as our old income and $300 as our new income. Now we can put $300 as I2 minus $100 for, Q, for I1 over $100 for I1. And once we have the equation set up, now all we have to do is just divide. Let's go ahead and divide the numerator. We get a negative three over five. And the denominator, we get 200 over 100. This further becomes negative 0 0.60 over two. And now we have a final answer of negative 0.30. Now in elasticity, we don't have any negative numbers because we have from zero to infinity as our range. But remember that this is not price elasticity, this is income elasticity, which means we're gonna have 
a two-part answer. The first part looks at the sine. The sine is a negative sine. Therefore, this good is an inferior good with respect to our income. And point three represents inelastic. It is less than one at point three. So now when we look at what has happened to your income to kind of make some sense into what we have, when your income increases by $200, your response to not consume this good is inelastic. It's slow. So for some odd reason, this inferior good to you has some value. It places a great deal as to why you want to keep on consuming this good, because we would expect at a higher income, you would simply upgrade and buy something more luxurious, more expensive. But in this case, you really like, you really prefer to keep consuming this 